All right, folks, so here is option three for your laser engraving project. So this one is going to be creating a depth image uh, using layers. So for this one, I am going to be, again, working in inches. I am going to set my width to 10 and my height to 12, which is my full size. I'm using a 300 resolution pixels option. Uh, CMYK and transparent background and I'm starting again in Photoshop. This design option is going to almost every time require you to start in Photoshop. Okay, whereas the other options you had some choice as to whether you went straight to Illustrator, possibly used snazzy maps or if you used Photoshop and then Illustrator. This one uh, we're going to need to get started with this in Photoshop. So I've got my work plane here. Um, now, what's also important here is that we're going to actually be introducing a third media, uh, which we'll talk a little bit later here. But to get started, uh, we're going to start with our original image. So I'm going to go to the file menu and place embedded. So I'm going to look for my image that I used. And just because, uh, well, I'm a little bit of a Star Wars nut and fan and I'm kind of excited to say the least for season two of Mandalorian to come out. I'm going to do a Mandalorian themed image. So here is my original image. You can see it's got a silhouette design to it. That doesn't mean you have to have a silhouette image. You could start with a photograph. It's just going to require you to do more work in Photoshop to get it to the stage like this where it is going to now be a silhouette and you're going to be cutting out the pieces to layer on top. So I'm going to create, like I said, two essential layers here uh, that are going to be made from the material that's provided and then uh, a few options for the third layer in here. So first thing I want to do is start in Photoshop making my layers. So if we look, there's a couple of issues to begin with with this image. So I'm just going to zoom in so that everyone can get an idea of this. So if you look here, there's a section of the helmet that is not connected to the rest of the Mandalorian character, as well as the little baby Yoda carrier is divided in segments, not connected, as well as it's floating above the ground. And the way I'm going to be making this is the brown layer here is going to be one layer depth. The orange layer is going to be a second one, and then the yellow layer is going to be the last one. So when I cut out Baby Yoda here flying in his little carrier, uh, he's not going to be connected to anything, and he's going to drop. So we're going to have to fix that problem. Also, if I decide that I want to keep the text here, uh, the centers or islands of the letters are going to need to be connected, and we're going to need to do what's called bridging. So to do that, first thing we're going to do is just get the line tool here. And we're going to draw a line and just to make it clean, I'm going to hold the shift key to keep the line straight and I'm going to do that. So it goes from the center of the A to the outside of the A. I'm going to draw one that goes right through the edges of the D. Same thing for the next A. Right from the outside, straight through the O. Do one through the bottom here of the R. The A again. And then that should do all of my letters. So now I've got a number of shapes drawn in. Uh, what I want to do with my layers for all my shapes is apply a stroke similar to what we did in the map. Uh, so I'm going to have the color of my stroke set to the color of my background here for now. Uh, and then I can just play around with the pixel size to see where I get a good amount of detail. I wouldn't suggest anything under about three or four pixels. So I'm gonna go with that four pixels, see what that looks like. Looks pretty good, we'll go with that. So that's the first thing we need to fix, is that bridging. And now those letters have connections from the outside to the inside of the islands of the letters so that they won't have the letter look uh, goofy after they've been cut out on the laser. The next area I need to look at is that mask of the Mandalorian. And to fix this area, I'm going to take my paintbrush and choose my layer here. 
And again, I'm going to choose my color to be the color of the character. And I'm just going to start filling in the segments of his mask. And I just right clicked here so I can change the size of my paintbrush. And I'm just going to paint this along. And one little trick that I'll show you here is if you're needing to just go in a straight path is if you click with the paintbrush in one spot, move your mouse to the next area, hold the shift key and click again, it connects those two points where you clicked. And I filled in the Mandalorian's mask and then I'm going to have to do the same thing here to baby Yoda and his carrier. Just hold that shift key and just fill these segments in here so that they're all bridged together and I have the silhouette that I want. For the details of my design. And there we go. And then to fix the last segment of this, which is that whole baby Yoda floating needing to be connected, I'm just going to make a little bit of a rock formation here. So it's going to appear as if instead of floating, the carrier is sitting on a rock formation. Take this back out, see how this looks. It looks like that blends in pretty well. So now all the bridging has been fixed and I can move on to the next step. So first thing I wanna do is I'm going to hold the shift key, select all my layers and merge these together so it's one design. Then I'm going to duplicate the layer and I'm gonna label my layer. So first one I'm gonna label just the color of the area that I'm keeping just for a frame of reference so that I know that this layer is the brown layer. I'm only going to keep the parts of the design that are brown. I will duplicate again. This one's going to be called orange, which are going to be keeping the orange areas here, these further back mountain ranges. And then my final layer here is going to be, I'm just going to name it here by double clicking, yellow. Okay, and then for the original, I'll just Name it original so that I know that that was my starting point. And I'm going to hide that layer by clicking on the icon for the eyeball. And then I'm going to hide my yellow and orange layers and begin selecting the brown layer, which is again very important to select the layer you want to work with. If I'm got the original selected, it's going to want to try and work from there. But you can see that the program isn't going to allow me because I've made it a non visible layer. So I need to select my brown layer, have it be the visible area. And then I'm going to Remove everything that isn't part of this brown frontmost foreground of the design. So to do that, a uh, quick tool here is the color range option in the select menu. And it brings up this dialog box. And all I'm going to do is click on the color area that I want to select. So I'm going to select that brown area. And then I can play with the fuzziness here, which will either bring in more areas that are similar to that color or it's going to bring in less so that I can have the detail highlighted nicely. So the areas that are white are going to be the areas that I'm going to be selecting and the areas that are black are going to be the areas that are left out. So I'm going to hit OK and I can see that all of the brown details of that foreground layer have been selected. So now I'm going to inverse my selection, hit delete so that everything else is gone. So we'll inverse it back again and I'm going to fill this in as a black fill so that when I take this to Illustrator, I can get the best tracing results possible. And we'll deselect this, and you can see again that all of my bridging for all my letters was maintained as well. So that's my first layer. Hide that one, we'll bring up the orange layer, and we'll do the very same thing. Go back to the color range menu, choose that orange layer, and play with that fuzziness, pinning it down so that I don't get the sky selected, but I do get the mountains. Select that, and I'm going to select an inverse, delete everything in there, inverse again, go back to the fill option, and fill it in as a black layer. Okay, so now this doesn't give me enough. I want to have everything building from the bottom so that they can stack on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is take that brown layer and make a duplicate of it. It's not going to matter too much what I name it, but I'm going to bring it back into view. And what I'm going to start to do now is use the eraser tool 
here, right click just to resize my eraser, is I'm going to start to delete the Mandalorian and play around with the areas that I want to fill in so that I can get the details of my design coming across. Or if I wanted to, I only really need the bottom area is I can just take the rectangle marquee tool here, draw a rectangle in down to the edge of my orange layer and then on the brown copy that I made, hit delete. It's going to remove all those segments. I'll deselect everything. And now zooming in, what I can do is use my paintbrush to start to join these together so that I can blend them. And if I really want to start blending them, what I can even do is take that orange layer and merge it down onto the brown copy, relabel this as my new orange layer, and now when I start painting, it's going to fill in everything, properly blending the two layers together. But what I'm really looking for is that just the segments of the design are joined for me to go back and fill this in using the selection tool and a color fill. So now I hear I have some broken rock formations. So what I'm gonna do is just resize my paintbrush and use that shift trick that I showed you earlier to just connect these segments here. And I'll do the same thing down here. Just to create these rock formations. This is getting filled in. I can enlarge my... Just to give you an idea of how this is going to end up looking. Uh, and I can clean these up however I see fit to get the formation that I want. Because again, my original image is more just a template, not the be all end all have to match to this. So what I can do now is get my magic wand tool. I'll select everything around the design. I'm going to inverse my selection and then using my paintbrush set to a very large size, I'm just going to paint in all the areas of the layer so that it's completely black. I have all the details of the rock formations and I filled in the Mandalorian because it's only needed for that frontmost brown layer. Now you see I have some selections up at the top here of that sky. What I can do to ensure that they don't become a part of this layer is just deselect the layer go to my eraser, very same thing, make my eraser tool gigantic, just erase along the skyline, just check by taking my magic wand and clicking on the skyline again, and now you can see that the selection doesn't have the details of the sky, it's only got the constraints of the rectangular shape of my design. So that's my orange layer done, and I could bring up my brown layer and see the details. I'm not going to see the, the layering, but I can check my my background image here. So there would be my orange layer behind the brown layer. And then I would have my brown layer here. That's how it's going to stand in front, just as a frame of reference check. So the last layer is going to be my yellow layer. And for this one, I'm going to use my magic wand. I'm going to select this moon or sun, whichever it is that I'm wanting it to be. I'm going to delete it from the design. So I'm going to do deselect everything and then using my eraser tool and sizing my eraser to different sizes I'm just going to go over some of these stars and just erase the sections of the design so that they poke through and could be highlighted by the laser as something to cut out and I'll just increase the size again here for some of these larger stars and again it's just a template i'm going with a pattern that i like so if i wanted to add you know a bigger star here and here i could do that put some smaller stars in some of the spots just to have those 
be a part of my finished work. So now the last thing I'm going to do is take my quick selection tool and I'm going to drag across all of the colors of my design and make sure that I get everything but all my dots where I've removed all the details. And those are going to be all the things that I fill in as black. So I've already deleted these areas because I used the eraser tool. So now all I do is just simply go to the fill option, black content fill, and there's my sky with the stars and the sun or the moon. Okay, so this one doesn't make it as easy for me to do a reference check on because again, it's going to cover everything up, but you can see that all of a sudden now my stars and my sun or moon are filled in with a color, but they're going to end up actually being nothing. So once I've got this done, now I can save each of these layers. So I've made sure that I only have the yellow layer selected and go save as. I'm going to name this, but first choose it as a photo JPEG. And I'm going to just name it again, same as the colors here for my layers, just so that I can have a frame of reference, maximum quality. There's my yellow layer done. Orange layer is going to be next. Save this one as JPEG. This one is my orange layer. Saved, maximum quality. Hide that orange layer, bring up the brown layer and save this one as, choose JPEG, brown layer, maximum quality, save that. And now I can switch over to Illustrator and create a document here, already 10 by 12 inches tall, good to go. And I'm just gonna bring all of my images in and use that image trace. So I'll start with the brown layer, place it here, We'll get the window open here for the image trace. We're going to go right to that black and white logo. We're going to get the tracing results with our outlines. We're going to go ahead and get those paths cranked up to 100, corners up to 100, noise down to zero, and we're going to ignore the white. Expand that one. There's one image, and I'm just going to put this down to the bottom, and I'm also going to change the fill to be a brown color so we can start to see the details of this coming forward as we bring in the next layer. So now I'm going to bring in my next layer. That's going to be my orange layer. We'll place this in here. Same thing. Use that black and white logo image trace feature. Get the tracing results with the outlines. Paths up to 100%. Corners up to 100%, noise down, and ignore the white. Expand that one. And this one, again, I'm also going to make into a color when we get the orange layer. Uh, it is in front of the brown layer, so I'm just going to go to my object menu and set the arrangement so it's at the back. And now I'll place it at the bottom. And you can see the design details are starting to come in now. And then my last yellow layer is going to be my final design to come in here. Black and white logo. Tracing result with outlines. Paths up to 100%. Corners up to 100%. Noise down to 1. Ignore the white. And expand. And then this one I'll set as a yellow layer here, orangey yellow layer. And same thing, we're gonna put this layer, and get rid of the image trace now, put this one to the back, and get this so it's on here centered. So the last component of this is I need to be able to stack these together. So I could do this as a stack similar to the stacked logo, uh, but if I wanted to as well, I could make this so that I could insert this into a picture frame with some spacers. So what I could even do is similar to the map, get my rectangle tool, draw out a 10 inch by 12 inch rectangle, draw a second rectangle, slightly smaller, so nine and three quarters by 11 and three quarters. Get these two shapes 
centered on the horizontal, centered on the vertical, get that Pathfinder tool that I've used previously, and delete the center, because again, the smaller object was the foreground or frontmost layer. It's what was removed from the large object. And then with this, I could make this be a brown color to match my brown layer. I'll get these two layers together. So now I've got my shape. I'll hold the shift key, get my brown layer. We'll align these centered on the horizontal. And we're not going to center these on the vertical because if we do that, it's going to, if you see here, put the design at the top. This is why I filled these in on the orange layer as well. What I want to do instead is actually put these so that they are vertically aligned at the bottom. And then using that Pathfinder tool, I can join these together. But first, I'm going to copy my border, Control and C, or again, edit and copy, fit and paste, or Control and V on my keyboard. So I'll push this border off to the side. Now I can take these two designs, use that Unite option, and there's one design component ready to go. Just put this off to the side here. I will take my orange layer, move it over to my border here, and I'm going to create this to be the same orange. We'll select both of these designs same thing, we're going to center these horizontally. We're not going to center them vertically. We're going to put the alignment for vertical on the bottom. And then using that Unite tool, join those together. And then the last layer doesn't need to have a box correct, uh, added to it because it already has the outside edges of the design there for it. So what I can do now, zoom out and show you here would be my layers to be cut. So that would be my first layer is the brown, second layer is the orange, third layer is the yellow, and there they are to be cut. So at this point, I could have a couple of choices. So we talked about how this would use a third material and you're only provided with a 10 inch by 12 inch piece of acrylic and a 10 inch by 12 inch piece of plywood. So if I did, for example, the brown layer out of plywood, and used uh, a nice piece of plywood for that to create a uh, grain and some pattern onto the uh, landscape here, the mountain ranges and stuff, things like that. I could use uh, a, a clear acrylic for the orange paint onto it to get sort of a, a luminescent or transparent, semi-transparent layer going. I could even just choose a black piece of acrylic or a red piece of acrylic and cut it out, go against my color scheme of my original image. And then for the last detail here, what I could do is a little bit of a cheater is I could actually use a piece of paper and that could be my background image for my last layer. And then I put everything on top of that. Uh, alternatively, another option is if I center these on top of each other, align them horizontally, align them vertically. This is my workspace. I'm just going to bring my brown layer to the front here. So it's on top of everything. What I could do, alternatively, if I want to use multiple materials, maybe the brown layer and the orange layer, I want to both cut those out of plywood. And then I want to cut the back of the sky out of the acrylic. Well, all I need to do is just scale this down so that I could cut multiples out of here. So I have a 10 inch by 12 inch space. So if I activate my link, linking properties feature here, if I scale this down to half of my size for my width, it's going to scale it down for the height as well. Okay, so now this would allow me to cut the brown layer and the orange layer out of one piece of acrylic. And if I even wanted to get super fancy, I could even add a fourth layer into here. Uh, alternatively, if I want to go a little bit bigger, I'm just going to undo these instead of going quite that small. Maybe my width, I want to go with six inches for my width. Oh, I don't have all my layers selected here. My mistake. I'm going to make my width here six inches. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Now this is going to be something where I could take that brown layer and that orange layer, cut them both out of a piece of plywood, like I said, and then I have my background, my final layer to be cut out of acrylic. 
Uh, and what I could even do there too is for that second piece of material, my piece of acrylic, because I just cut holes through the sky, what I could do just to add to it is take the rectangle, draw a rectangle in here, and I just make that six by seven point two. So if I make this six inches, oh, that needs to be the seven point two. Seven point two by six. I could in turn just cut this out and have a square to be my final background. So what I could do is say for example, cut that, do it red. So I could again use clear acrylic for example. With that clear acrylic, paint the square here that I have red, paint this one a yellow. This gets stacked on top of the red. And what I do here is I'll just get my red layer to be the background. And then same thing with my wood here. What I could do with all of my designs after I've cut them, say I take the clear acrylic, cut the red and yellow layers out of that, paint them their appropriate colors, cut the brown and orange layers out of wood. Then when I layer these now, I can end up with the red shining through or showing through the areas of the yellow that have been cut out. The yellow covers up the rest of the red layer. And then my orange layer is wood stacked from my brown layer. And if I even inserted spacers between these, I can create even further depth in here. Um, now, before I cut these, the important thing to remember is that all of your layers have to be set for what features you're looking to utilize. So if I only want to cut out the silhouettes, all of these designs need to have the fill turned off, need to have a stroke turned on, that's 0.25 of a point, it needs to be a color of some kind, red, blue, yellow, green, whichever your preference, and then those could have those designs cut out. If I further wanted to add to this, so for that second plywood layer, maybe I really wanted to showcase some of the details of rocks and things like that, I could add a texture and engrave that texture or in the sky, maybe I wanted to add in some uh, engraving to have that gradient of the sky going lighter to darker, then I could do that and engrave those patterns before I set them in to be cut with the laser. So that is the third option for creating a stacked image. And again, for all of these designs, it's not set that you have to do something exactly like what I did. You do not have to do a map or do a Star Wars scene or a silhouette scene or do uh, a logo for the school. You don't have to create something original because when you transform it, it will become something original. Uh, you can use a photograph to